Awesome. Okay. So you guys, during this time, um, this time slot right here, I don't know if this is always your guys' uh, team meeting, but um, in the future, if you have more questions or if you need a refresher at 1 p.m. on Thursdays Pacific, so four o'clock Eastern, we do host a workshop um, for enterprise and it's hosted by the account managers that report to me. So they take turns. I use it as an opportunity for them to get practice in presenting, but also to do live walkthroughs of the platform as well as um, any Q and A. And and the audience for that is a gamut. So it could be somebody that's um, got somebody like joining that that's potentially going to be an enterprise. It could be enterprise owners. It could be power sellers that are looking to promote this to outside groups out in the field. So, so just so you know, we, we get all types of audience. It's open to whoever it is on power calendar and it's being hosted right now as we speak. <laughs> so um, there's somebody wanting to be admitted right now. I think you see that Bo. Awesome. All right. So just to get started. So enterprise is, is new to me. So I'm the director of enterprise accounts as well as um, still sales operations. Um, what that means is I manage the account management team so that we wanted to have a more hands-on availability to the 300 some odd enterprise owners that we have in our group. And our enterprise groups will fall under all types of categories. So I believe you said Frank is a build partner. He's um, being onboarded as one of our IPs. We have Another one of our IPs in uh, Northern California, I think it's Safe Haven, who, who just re-signed up as Enterprise. And, and in those situations, like we can get into a more one-on-one um, -on -one discussion about like what your needs are and what you plan to use Enterprise for. But essentially to be an Enterprise build partner in power, um, there's a full vetting process. So we have um, enterprise build partners that are just wanting and only allowed to self-fulfill their own jobs and their own sales. And they're, they're now utilizing our platform to either um, provide our financing and our HICs and everything through their sales team and have control of the commissions of the org structure of their seated sellers. Or there's enterprise build partners, even sometimes enterprise roofers that are just doing self-fulfilled roofing, but they have leads that they they don't want to take the time to sell themselves and they want to utilize our network of tier threes or the sponsorship or seller group that brought them in to do the sale for them and they can set the commissions and set the lead offers. So there's a lot of different ways that people are utilizing enterprise for their groups, depending on what their needs are. But typically you'll find that an enterprise is a group that is planning to seat sellers or seat org have an org structure inside of their their group. So they might have an admin or an org manager or a sales manager. So that's what enterprise really does give them is the ability to, to have flexibility on how they want to run their business. Um, here's a slide right now that just kind of shows the current account management team. It's myself, Abigail Hensley, who is on, on the East Coast, and Paris, who is out of Texas. Um, they are, we're here to help you guys in very, very rare instances, we might get on a call with you if you are you have a high profile account, somebody that's going to be doing over 30 to 40 sales um, contracts per month, you know, and, and you want to set up a time to get an, a personalized one on one walkthrough. My team can help with that. You can just reach out to myself or anybody on my team. Um, but once an enterprise group has been through the application process and approved and they're enrolled, then we will pick it up. We will do the welcome call. We will schedule a time with them to get a platform walkthrough. So either way, they're going to get that information. We will be sending out enterprise sales agreements. There's a separate enterprise sales agreement. So all sellers, all people on our platform will have to sign off on our PNPs, which is the general seller terms and conditions. And then enterprise sales um, groups will have a separate um, enterprise sales agreement that the owners have to sign off on as well. Moving on again, back to the account management team. So here, here's how I've just currently just split them out. As our team grows, then our split will, will change. But right now, anything that's on the East Coast, Abigail will handle because she is located out of, I believe, Pennsylvania or Philadelphia. Um, and Paris is over here taking care of the West Coast and Hawaii. 
you guys have probably seen this um, presentation. It is located on the Enterprise Knowledge Base page. Can I get a show of hands if you have not seen this um, Enterprise presentation? Okay, so a couple of you. So were you guys at Power World? <laughs> we did a breakout at Power World. So this presentation is really geared for folks like yourself that are looking to talk to a potential enterprise group that you think would be a great candidate for enterprise about why they should be um, joining the Power Platform. We are very much a platform. We are Power, you'll see it in all of our marketing. Power is the platform that our enterprise groups can now um, join and be able to manage their business. The big, huge um, value that we can bring to a lot of these groups, uh, especially like some of our build partners is, is the fact that we have that purchasing and negotiation power with um, companies like Good Leap and Sonova and Sunrun and our equipment manufacturers. And we get great pricing. And because of our COGS model, it allows them that flexibility so that they'll be able to control how they want to set the commission structure or the um, payment structure within their own org. So a lot of times our enterprise groups, when they're coming into our platform, are seeing that they can get rid of a lot of other tools that they might have been using and take them like at $385 a month and $50 per seated seller. This is actually a lot less expensive to them than having to have X account for this and X account for that and payroll account for this and do this and make my own negotiations with CED or my own negotiations with Goodly to try to get the best dealer fees and stuff like that. So we bring all of that buying power to them. Um, so again, selling and scaling solar, it, it really shouldn't be hard. We try to make this the easiest path for them because now they'll have access to vision, powers, um, vision proposal tool that's, um, still being developed, but is is out there for use. We've done some customizations to make this even better for our enterprise groups um, with co-branding and, and, and the ability for the owners to choose if margin is going to be uh, viewable by their sellers or not, you know, so they can really set and customize how they want their sales staff to, to run with our product. And again, that end-to-end -end sales enablement platform, um, project fulfillment, our enterprise build partners, I'm, I'm saying a lot about this part of the business simply because Frank is here. <laughs> um, usually um, you'll see us talk about it from all aspects because we do have a bulk of our enterprise groups are just sales orgs. They are sales orgs that are providing and, and doing a lead program or a call center program for their sales org. And then they're utilizing our platform to fulfill their projects. Um, that we're giving the enterprise owners and the enterprise groups that administrative control to take care of their business, to be able to, again, scale it as they, as they need to. I'm going to keep going here. So when we talk about some of the differences with enterprise and like the standard, um, sales feature is, is, is again, it's access to the co-branding feature in the vision. This is big for some of our, um, groups that are really out there, um, as their own ent entity and they're in partnership with power. So that is how we are um, branding this with our enterprise groups. We will eventually have um, custom branded solutions with our welcome kits and everything else that they can order out of the uh, marketing center. This is uh, definitely an ask that has been coming from a lot of our top enterprise groups to be able to white label, not white label, but co-brand our big kits that they can send out after every installation. Um, so all of those things, the idea is that we are in, they are in partnership with power. I'm going to pause for a second and just double check. Are there any questions um, happening right now in the chat or anybody have any questions? Feel free to just raise your hand. We did. All right. I don't, I don't see so, any questions yet. So, yeah. Nice, nice. So, so again, that sales enablement side for for a lot of our enterprise groups that are sales orgs or whether they're lead gen companies that are sending out lead offers. There's so many different ways that an enterprise gets categorized in power. So right now, you can come in and you can have a sales org and you can see sellers underneath you in your org. And then if you're providing those leads or you're distributing leads, it makes it much easier for you to control what those leads lead offers look like and what those commission structures look like. 
Um, then there's lead gen companies that, you know, come in and they might choose to be a power pro because they're able to do lead offers to other companies, but they'll have more functionality with an enterprise to manage their full staff and business so that they can, again, they, they pull in the lead into their system. They want to utilize our tier three sellers. They can then do a lead offer or any of our tier two and above sellers, they can do a lead offer out to. And then that person, if they accept their terms um, on the commission split, they'll be able to um, fulfill that project for them and close the deal. So again, for a lot of our enterprise groups, it, it's the same reason why you guys are in power. It gives you guys the same functionality, but unless you're like running a full uh, management and admin team, then there's probably no reason for you to be using enterprise. We have definitely had power sellers upgrade to enterprise, but it's the same stuff that we bring to the table here at power that you guys use that our enterprise will use. They'll want to use our fulfillment. They'll want to be able to have us procure the equipment and then just drop ship it to their warehouse or out to the job. They'll want to use our project management team to help uh, manage the life cycle of that project once it's been sold. They'll want to have access to power care and the 30 year um, power care warranty. Um, for those that don't know, power care is our product. However, it is a separate company that we've set up. So all the money in power care is not actually tied to power PVC. So that should give you some peace of mind when you're talking to your customers. Um, if anything happened to power, they'd still have power care in, in place. Um, they want to have the ability to utilize our uh, all of our assets, all of our resources, everything from knowledge base down to power university. This is a turnkey solution for enterprise build partners or enterprise roofing build partners that don't have a trained sales staff, but they want to get them trained. They can actually plug into all of that right here through power. And then in the meantime, they can um, set it up to where they're working with a more experienced seller through our tier three program. You know, again, um, what's nice is we give them the ability, they can seat, seat their own teams as project closers or they can use ours. That's what I keep uh, coming back to because people do use our power seller platform to close deals for them. Um, they'll also be able to utilize our algorithm. You know, if, if they if they're like a lead gen company that really isn't interested in selling projects, they can just literally tag a tier three on that project and um, and look for a closer through our power pair algorithm, which is going to pull up the top top closers based on close rate, based on um, success rate in that utility and so forth. It's always changing and it's always based on a rolling six months but they'll be able to set those terms for them. And again, through the project fulfillment side of it, you know, we're going to be able to handle um, handle everything from design to plans if they want to do that. That That is something that they negotiate and determine through the MSA process. Um, the MSA is the master service agreement that our build partners and our IPs have to sign and, in order to move forward. And at the very end of the slideshow, I do have a slide that gives you an idea of what would be required for somebody to even even be looked at um, to be an enterprise build partner. Not everybody can do it. We have definitely rejected some companies. They were just too small or they didn't have enough insurance or they didn't have enough liability. So so we do try to take some of that hassle off, but we're, we're also not going to just take anybody into our platform. We have to make sure that anybody that's selling our power care warranty, especially or selling our uh, and in fulfilling their own jobs are, are doing it to a standard that that we require. We've had too many of those issues in the past. <laughs> so um, so we've gotten a lot more strict with that. Um, again, dedicated project managers, we're still talking about project fulfillment. I'm going to skip through some of this because you guys know a lot about how our PM uh, team and our PM stuff is set up. But let's get into the administrative controls because this is where enterprise really differs from a standard power seller account or even a power pro account. So power makes it easy for people to build a team. They can set and see these various users within their organization so that they can, like if they have a virtual assistant that they want, you know, managing all of their projects and, and communicating to your PMs and tickets and double checking that all the projects are moving forward so that it frees up your time to go do something else. You can seat that person. 
if they have a lead generator, maybe a call center that they're, they're using, they can seek them through the lead generator tab. Um, they can see their closers. If you've built a sales team and you've created a, a payment structure that is equitable for everybody and you want to be able to reward your own administrative staff, you can actually set every project or every piece of the revenue to, to do a certain percentage to your manager or your org manager that comes right out of that, that total margin. So you have a lot of control here on how you want to utilize the um the team building and the seating of the users' roles. You'll also be able to co uh, customize, like I mentioned, that compensation plan. Power still takes um, their 30, uh, between 20 and 30% of the total revenue. 20%, I say that because there is a way for enterprise partners to scale up to earning an 80-20 split versus a 70-30 split. Um, the owners of these orgs can choose whether or not their seated sellers are allowed to um, build teams underneath them, like teams outside of their org, like they can use their online marketing links. The owners have the opportunity to turn on or off that feature so that their sellers can actually, you know, invite people to power and kind of uh, essentially sponsor somebody that might not be inside their org, sponsor somebody in Hawaii, let's say, you know. So they have that functionality, but they'll also have the functionality to set the, the compensation splits um, on the plan. World-class training, again, certification. You guys have seen our Power University. They'll have access to all of that. Our enterprise, again, build partners and install partners have access to pages within our knowledge base that are specific to installation. Um, they'll be able to literally plug into all of the same stuff that you guys have access to, and which is really huge for, again, a lot of these orgs that don't have the resources or time to constantly and, and um, regularly be training their sellers. And again, um, I don't know, we just feel like power enterprises for everyone. Like it, it really is for all different types of of groups and organizations that are out there. Um, it gives them so much more flexibility. It gives them all of the features that they're looking for to manage their business. And it gives them access to our cost of goods model. You know, this cost of goods model is different from most companies in the industry, you know, so they'll be able to see and leverage that, that tool so that they can um, sell deals, at, at hopefully a better, better rate than what some of our other companies, uh, solar sales companies that we're up against will be selling at. So they have the same access to um, the org sales. They'll have the 70% of the net margin. Again, they get to determine what the team split would be. Um, they'll have a volume bonus, 10% um, of the net margin, volume-based. Again, they'll have access to the um, team bonuses as well, where they're getting a portion of powers side of the business. That means that if uh, Dana, if you sponsor Frank, he's an enterprise org owner now, he seats four sellers. Those four sellers become level one to him. They become level one to you. Um, that means any installations that start happening through his org, um, if you have unlocked level two, then you would get paid whatever that level two bonus is, which is out of powers portion of the commission. And the same would go for Frank. He would get um, a level one bonus for even for his seated sellers because they would be joining under his seat. Now, it's a slightly smaller split when you're the org owner to the seated sellers. But again, you're still getting a portion of powers team bonus split, you know. All right, I'm going to jump over into here. We already know that. These are the plan prices. Um, you guys usually can see this in your profile when you click on your account and like you're interested in upgrading your account. But essentially a power enterprise is $350 a month. Any seated sellers um, are $50 a month. And then any admin roles are $25 a month um, per, per role. And we do have quite a few organizations. They're seating dozens of sellers because they're out there, you know, crushing, crushing multiple markets. Um, on the enterprise org side, oops, where is my slide on that? Let me see if I skip the slide. Richard, can you go back to that one slide with the, with the, uh, the cost, please? Yeah, I will. Um, let me go here. Uh, I'll go backwards from here, but it's the same, same slide. Maybe. 
There we go. You got that? Awesome. Um, what I was going to show is, again, this is kind of the, the general checklist that, that how are sellers that are looking to recruit or bring in enterprise build partners, people that are looking to self-fulfill, but they're installers, solar installers. There is quite a few items that they'll need to be able to provide. There's a full intake form. Um, that process for getting through there is, again, there's an application process. Those applications are still being um, vetted by Charles. Sometimes I'll get involved in the application process, but once something's been approved, and they want to be a build partner, and um, then we'll pass it over to our business development specialist. Um, usually that'll be Amanda Propokowicz. Uh, she would then have them fill out an intake form, set up an onboarding session to go over most of these items that you see here. So be, be aware of this. I, I know we haven't communicated to the field a lot on all of the items that would be necessary for somebody to become a self-fulfilled install partner. Um, so let me, uh, let me start from this one, because this is the, this is the slide deck I wanted to kind of just briefly go over. So you guys have this on your recorded, um, training, but we have done quite a few enhancements to the enterprise product and we're continuing to do enhancements to the enterprise product. Um, so some of the things we rolled out at Power World co-branding and vision proposal settings, user invite drawer, team assignments and compensation settings, you know, end-to-end -end solar enablement project platform. You know, again, COGS model, we have that COGS model for organizations um, where there's a 70-30 or, or they can earn into an 80-20 volume-based split. They have preferred partner selection. So again, if you're an enterprise sales org, but you're not a build partner, but you have build partners that are also on the platform or you you know of a specific uh, uh, partner that you want to install your projects, you will be able to set your preferred partner inside your um, user settings when in your profile so that you can have your projects assigned to a specific um, installer in the platform. It, right now, if you're a Power Pro um, and you you want to be able to set a preferred partner. That's another way. If you're a Power Pro, you have that ability to choose a preferred partner as well. Automated proposals, designs, contracts, um, again, equity and revenue share, all the things we kind of went over. Um, so this user invite drawer. So they'll easily be able to invite all user types, um, adjust or delete pending invitations. They can manage their seated users um, recruiting efforts assign unique compensation settings and set tier three mentor requirements for their seated sellers. So enterprise groups, if they have a sales team, let's say they bring in five sale sellers under their org, um, one guy is the closer, the other four are in training. They can actually immediately promote that person to a tier three within their own org so that they can be the closer for the other four's projects. They can then set those other four to say tier two, so they can only sell their own projects or they can make it to where they're forced to work with a tier three. They have the control of doing that. Now, that does not mean that they are tier three in our main directory though. They would, uh, any anybody that wants to be in the main directory still has to go through the same requirements that we have set up, which is five personal sales, you know, completion of all your certifications that are required, interview with me, all that stuff. That stuff still applies for the main directory, but within an enterprise org, they can jump the main, they can literally set their own roles within their own org. All right, co-branding. This has been a big one um, to get in there. So, the, uh, so again, I believe there's also, I haven't looked at Power Pro. Is anybody on this call a Power Pro or is everybody a Power Seller? No Power Pros. I don't remember if Power Pro comes with co-branding, but Enterprise does. And again, this is big when you're talking to these groups as you're trying to recruit them. You're going to want to let them know, like, look, you're going to be in partnership with Power, but it's still your company and we're going to be promoting your company as well. Since you're a self-fulfilled build partner or you're a sales org that's, you know, out working in multiple areas, this, this has been a very big ask that we were able to get um, built in for that. 
Team assignments is huge for these larger groups. Again, you know, you might have an enterprise org that's based in Illinois, but they have sellers in Arizona. They have sellers in Texas. They might have two teams in a certain market. They'll be able to actually um, organize and set up their teams separately so that they can see, um, so that if they set, say, a sales manager for X team, say I'm the California team sales manager and I have a group of five people underneath me, I, as the org manager, would be able to see all of my team's projects. I would be able to help them manage their pipeline. I would be able to help coach them and so forth. Um, as that sales manager, again, my enterprise owner would be able to then sketch, set up maybe some type of rev share or override of the, of the total margin or the total um, plan to reward my team's efforts, basically, you know? So it gives you a lot of uh, functionality. Compensation settings. Again, there's multiple ways that they can um, set the comp plan. They can set default compensation settings for all new enterprise users. They can assign unique lead offer terms to each seller. So again, maybe they want to set it as a 40-60 split as opposed to a 50-50 um, because they're paying out of that extra 10%. Maybe they're paying their lead generators um, a certain um, flat fee or, or commission or so forth. Um, so again, they can set it to where managers get a certain percentage of the deal, their support staff can get a certain percentage, and then they can do all of their various terms and um, e even to the finance rebate. So again, if you're selling finance deals, there's a reserve set aside um, that you guys get paid once a month for anything that, that goes to install or funding. For the previous month, you know, you know how that works. Um, they'll be able to also control that that split as well. Individual compensation settings uh, again, individual seller compensation. They can set those terms. They can set the individual offer terms. Um, they can man uh, manager payment. They can pay their managers a certain percentage, which is huge. Um, they can support payment. They can even set it to where 0% goes to their sellers and all of the funds on a project will go straight to the org owner. And in that case, then the org owner then um, pays out their employees or through a 1099. We have had some enterprise groups want to do it this way. That's where they're not utilizing the power payment platform to handle their payroll. Um, they would be responsible for it in that case. Um, that happens in cases where the enterprise group really needs to show valuation by having the money throw, flow through their bank account first so that it shows their valuation if they're looking for additional funding or loans or whatever. So, so but that is something that they're able to do. Staff override, like I mentioned, um, and then vision proposal settings. This is, this is um, a big, big piece here. So as long as they're using vision, not solo, Solo doesn't, we don't offer this um, feature to enterprise, but as long as they're using vision, they'll be able to set minimum margin. Um, they can set a fixed margin or they can um, allow their sellers to see the full pricing breakdown. So they have control of what their sellers can see. This is big because again, a lot of these enterprise orgs are structured differently than say our full transparency cost of goods, goods model if you're just a regular power seller. Project portfolio visibility. Um, again, we change. You guys know this already. Uh, they have a very similar view. They'll be able to see everything that's in a uh, pre-sales status, meaning it has not gone through contract. Um, it has not been um, through the project intake team, and then all of their projects in the post-sales tab. They have an owner dashboard, and then the staffs have their own dashboard. So the owners will also have um, different information available to them on their owner dashboard. We already went over this. We went over that. All right, you guys. Um, I think that is it. Let me um see if this is gonna work. So I'm logged in to an enterprise group right now that has nothing in their group. Um, I just wanted to show you that it looks very similar to the power sales or seller dashboard that you guys have access to. But what uh, an enterprise owner has is a is a separate um, area here called enterprise. So now when they log into their enterprise dashboard, if there's any metrics, they'll show up here. If you um, go down to their projects, they'll be able to see their projects that are and and this would show them all of their projects. 
um, and then they would be able to see see their seated sellers or invite users into their team team group. Here they would um, go ahead and set the invite details. Like I want this person to be a seated seller. I want them to be an org manager. I'm gonna complete my profile. I'm gonna send this invite to that person so that they can continue their setup. So th they just have a, a little bit of extra functionality um, and then they have to approve their seated sellers into their group. So this is just a brief overview. I don't have a demo site populated with information for you guys to see, but we will in the future. So that is it in a nutshell. Let me go check the chat window. All right, Jeffrey. Yeah, thank you. Um, if there's no questions, I would, like I said, I would recommend check out our um, enterprise workshops on Thursdays. We're going to do one next week, but it's going to be a little different since um, myself and the whole uh, account management team will be at RoofCon in Orlando next week. So we thought it might be fun to actually host our workshop from RoofCon and show people our booth and stuff. Um, we're going to be at RoofCon where our demos to a roofer are very different than say my demo to a potential enterprise build partner. You know, when we're talking to roofers, we're really pitching them on, hey, you should come to the power platform because we already know you're in front of your roofers. You know, like imagine you're at your homeowner's house and now, you know, you're already looking at their roof. You're already uh, giving them a quote for, for that project. And you notice the direction of their roof is great for the sun and they have a night and, or you have an opportunity to build their roof in a way that it's very friendly to solar. You know, we're going to be telling this type of story to the roofers where it's like, wouldn't it be amazing for you to go ahead and uh, talk to that homeowner and say, Hey, homeowner, have you ever thought about looking at solar? Great. You know what? We can help you with that. We can help you with that. And at that point, they can either send it to their own sales team that's trained in selling how, on how to sell solar. Or they can send it to, Anybody in our platform that they want to do a lead offer to that's on our tier three platform so that they can go and sell that deal for them. Most people are going to be partnered with somebody, somebody they know. Clayton, I see that you have your hand raised. Yes, thank you. So um, I, I have some really great uh, installers out here in my area that I would like to basically pitch this to. What kind of tools do we have? Is there a video somewhere that we can Everything's play on the Enterprise Knowledge Base page. Check it out. Okay. There's a whole presentation there. There's um there's videos there <laughs> as well. They talk like there's a really good one about like the red line model. I think everybody's heard that one from Charles, you know, um and mm -hmm. his YouTube video. Um like I said, just uh, this isn't like this slide here. Take a screenshot of this because this is something that I found after I came onto this team. Um, came into this department that wasn't really well discussed to the seller field that is doing what you want to do, which is talk mm -hmm. to potential build partners mm -hmm. of the qualifications. Like they have to be, um, they have to be end phase solar edge and NXT certified prior to onboarding. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that we require of them before we'll even let them even be their own self-fulfilled build partner. You know what I mean? Like yes. they fulfill their own jobs, but it's because again, they're doing it on our paper. They're doing it under our right. umbrella. So we have to be careful with who we're bringing in. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Rachel, but definitely knowledge base type in enterprise. There's a ton of information, but this one in particular is not anywhere. I've asked for it to be posted. So just take a screenshot. What was Rachel? the next person? Yeah, yeah. How you doing? Sorry. I don't know how to raise my hand on the software here. Sorry. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to ask a couple just quick questions. And these are pretty basic yes, no questions. Is um as far as the the getting this set up, if they're going to be enterprise, is there a way to get a dedicated project manager for the company so they're not dealing with lots of different project managers? No. No. Okay. No, they wouldn't have a dedicated, but if they're a build partner that is doing a specific area, the likelihood is that that same project, because our project managers are assigned to installers, essentially. That's why you might see, they're not assigned to the project specifically, they're assigned to installers inside of our platform. So the likelihood is they would have the same project manager if they're installing in the same kind of general area, you know? 
Yeah, yeah. No, I just that that just. But they don't have the ability to request or have a dedicated project project manager. No, we don't. Have so that. sometimes, as a seller, even as a, just a seller, it get, gets confusing when you have a project, different project manager for different jobs, and then sometimes, even after you have a project manager, it's reassigned yeah. to it. We just don't have manager. those kind of resources. So it's it's and, kind of and, it's and when you see somebody fall. getting uh, reassigned, it's typically because either that install partner got reassigned. Um, and therefore, then they picked up a new project manager. Project managers, I'm pretty sure, are still assigned to the install partner, not to the project itself. Um, right. And then that is done regionally. But there is the new um, project management calendar a feature, which is awesome. I don't know if you guys have taken time to use this. Do you even know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. If you need it, use it because it's basically... The ability to book a 15 minute call with your project manager to go over all the details of your project, it has definitely alleviated a lot of headache and made things run so much faster. Something I, I had been asking for for years. <laughs> I'm like, why can't we just like take 10 minutes with that person? You know, I just need to double check that they understand that the roof is going to be this way or something like that. So um, if you haven't seen that, like if, take advantage of it. If you're dealing with like at some of these enterprise accounts, if they're bringing us like theoretically maybe even hundreds of opportunities, having a dedicated person to go over everything would be would simplify the process for them. But it, it's it is what it is. I mean that's that's not how it is. So another yeah. question I had was um, the the uh, are they are does power deliver the materials to the job site for the for the installer? Or I think they, they have the choice. They go over this in the in the onboarding process for build partners, but I believe they would have the ability if they have a warehouse, we can deliver it to the warehouse. Um, but usually, we're we're shipping it straight to the home homeowner's um, house to the home um, for install day. But they right. do, I believe, have a choice if they if they can store the product in their warehouse and prefer it to ship there. I believe it can go there. And last question. Um, you show the leaderboard and I know power has a leaderboard for all the top people in the country. Are they, if they have their own portal specific to them, can they put their own like sales people, like the top salesperson within their company or is it, is it only the power company? Like could, could they have their own leaderboard that's specific I to them? I think their dashboard, their enterprise owner's dashboard is specific to their team. Um, oh, nice. And then they have a regular dashboard. That's the whole company. There's two dashboards inside the enterprise owner's um, login. I think that's care. what you're asking. Yeah. Yeah. The power care is solar insure, right? Power care is power care. We don't use solar insure anymore and we haven't for years. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that's fine. No, just the, the benefit. Sometimes if you talk about solar insure, the benefit is if it's backed by Zurich, that's like a hundred something year old company. That sounds. Yeah. We don't do solar insure. insure. Okay. Got it. Yeah. And, and definitely don't bring up solar insure because we definitely don't do it anymore. Power care is power care. It's owned by an entity that's exclusive to power. It's an entity we created, but essentially. So the question power. comes up sometimes like, you know, how do I know you're going to be around? Obviously, we're the fastest growing. Which is solar why company. I was saying um, it's very important to, to stress that power care is not the same company as power PBC. It is a separate financial entity. So if anything happens to power, power PVC, they would be covered under the power care warranty. Okay. Cool. All right, guys. Um, I am I missing anything in the chat? No, I just had one um, last question. If no one else has uh -huh. one. Um, I think you mentioned this already, uh, but you said that anytime someone does get onboarded, your team does a a one-on-one -on -one kind of welcome call or training with them. Is yeah. that right? Cool. Yeah, so they'll get a welcome call from the account manager. The account manager will then send them their calendar link to book a time to do a platform walkthrough. Now, once we identify and get to know more of our enterprises and, and their needs, you know, we've we've seen some where we're looking at their metrics, we're looking at their sales, and they're kind of like, you know, up and down. That's where we might do a proactive call to them and say, hey, we'd love to get on a on a sales sales team meeting like this and do a training on how to utilize our platform, how to use our proposal service, how to close deals. Even the good thing about the people on the account management team is they have also sold solar in the past. So they're and and we also have somebody that was a project manager Two of both of them were project managers before. So they kind of have a more well-rounded um, view of our business and, and are able to kind of speak to both sides, which is nice. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel, yeah. for the training. 
So I'm, Thank I'm you guys. Awesome. I hope this was helpful. And like I said, if you ever need a refresher or anything like that, come to the Thursday 1 p.m. workshop. They are, I don't believe we're recording those right now because they are a little bit, they're not like, they're not the same thing every time, you know? So, so just check it out. It is, it is a workshop. It's kind of more of an open forum and it, it's every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific. Bye guys.